Hello everyone, good morning. Today is 26th of April and I welcome you to the Hindu newspaper analysis discussion. So guys, let's start with the video and uh, in this video we are going to discuss entire analysis of Hindu newspaper. We will take all the articles along with the background way forward and I would like to tell you that you can also download the explainer notes of this particular session from our telegram channel. Link for the telegram channel is given in description box in YouTube. Now, uh, before uh, guys starting, let's take overview of entire newspaper so that we can understand that actually which articles are important in today's newspaper. So here we see the first article, Supreme Court to hear wrestlers plea against BJP MP. So guys, recently it has been seen that the wrestlers, they have alleged that they have been, uh, their, uh, their sexual assault exploitation has happened. So in this particular matter, this case is going on. Amid ceasefire, first set of Indian leaves war battered Sudan. So we will understand the operation Kaveri and in this respect there is one more article that has come on editorial section we'll take that also then uh, we have the advertisement and in city section MCD to elect its next mayor today Apaying second win now uh, these are the regional political issues which are not important for our UPSC CSE examination okay so we will skip it then uh, moving on other these uh, tenders advertisements etc has been given then again the political regional political articles etc are there so nothing much relevant in this particular direction we will skip it and uh, guys uh, we will be uh, here okay you can see one article scaring animals using sticks is an act of cruelty high court now in the past few uh, in the in the past few months we have seen this particular thing that there are many uh, attacks by the stray dogs that have been committed on toddlers and many other people also and after that there were the demand that these animals should be culled or basically the people have uh, showing a lot of aggression towards these animals. In this particular context what has happened now the Supreme Court, uh, the High Court sorry, Bombay High Court says that even scaring the animal using the sticks is cruelty. Okay, it is cruelty against the animal and such things should not be done. Then further moving on, uh, we come to editorial page. Now the first article, the end of ordinary politics. Now guys, this particular article, it has a too much of political undertone. The article is criticizing the BJP government, Sangh Parivar. It is saying that how selectively certain acts are being punished and all such kind of things. Now the article guys doesn't contain the political, uh, doesn't contain the academic substance. So I will not recommend you to go and read this particular article. You can just skip it, not relevant for our exam. Then rescue service. Now this article is talking about the operation Kaveri. We'll take this particular article for the exam as what it is, uh, uh, what important substance is there, we'll take it. Sanskrit is official language, Ambedkar's amendment. We'll see this particular article also. The right to uh, litigate. Now this article talks about the environmental priorities of India. We'll take this particular article also. Then further moving on the next page, the limited role of textbooks in history. So guys, we have seen that a few days back, the government had dropped certain references of the Mughal rulers from the history textbooks. So in this particular light, this particular article is continuing. We'll see that what the article is talking about. Then Trinamool caught in a political flux. Political article, not very much important. Kolkata records hottest April, east and northeast sizzle. Okay, so guys, what this article is talking about? The article is giving a kind of an idea about the hottest day in April. What was temperature in Amravati, okay, Amravati, Itanagar, Dispur, Patna, Raipur. So all the cities, temperature, hottest day in April, Fine, which day was the hottest, what is the temperature, all such things have been given. Now for examination, you are not required to go too much in detail and track it, okay. So you can just skip this. Understanding the temperature anomalies. Okay guys, now understand this thing. Recently, the, recently, the meteorologist have provided a report where they have said this thing that the 2023 March was the second hottest March since the recorded meteorological history we have okay so since we started recording the meteorological data the march of 2023 was the second hottest march month okay and uh, the uh, before that 2016 was the hottest march month now it is being provided that in 2016 what happened that uh, the year of 2016 had a uh, basically had a el nino because of that the temperatures increased now the article is talking about the temperature anomalies, temperature anomalies. Now guys understand this particular thing, the article though it is mentioning that every year the temperatures are increasing, but for beyond this particular thing, 
in the article much academic substance or relevant substance on which a question can be framed such thing has not been mentioned okay so that is the thing the next article genome sequencing and the genome india project now this is an important article we'll see this particular article we'll understand this article recently it was in news also we'll take it up then further moving on guys uh, on the code on social security for platform based gig workers okay now this particular article is from the archives from the archives from the archives means that this article was published earlier now again it it has been published in the hindu newspaper so this particular article actually came in 2020 okay so this particular article was published on 8th october 2020 and now after 3 years this article has again been published now what will it true we will we, we, we'll now see some of the information is relevant now also some of the information has become redundant so that redundant information we don't need so we will try to make sense of this particular article in the present context okay then further moving on protesting mob sets police station on fire in kalia ganj okay uh, 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 supplementary charge sheet filed against Sisodia, not very much important article for examination. Okay, we will be moving upon. Then again, uh, okay, right of, uh, rate of out-of-pocket expenditure declines. Now, this is an important factual detail that we'll see for the exam. Then uh, we can see Shiromani Akali Dal, Patriarch and former Punjab CM Prakash Singh Badal has passed away. Now, one more thing guys, that uh, see, you are not required to track the political sketch of the contemporary political leaders for your exam. Okay, so if you want for your interest, you can read the uh, uh, prof uh, life profile sketch of uh, late CM Prakash Singh Badal. But for exam, no need to go too much in detail. India to host SEO defense ministers meet this week. We'll see this particular article. Then after that, uh, why is PM Cares Fund not subject to public audit? Okay, now guys, you might be knowing about the PM Cares Fund that was announced into the aftermath of the COVID-19 pandemic and a lot of contributions were also made to the PM Cares. Now, whether we can, whether the public audit can be done that, okay, how much money was received, how much money was spent or not. So guys, up till now, public audit of PM Cares Fund has not been done. Why? Because public uh, PM Cares Fund, it is not a public authority. It is fine. It is not a public fund. Okay, that is, that has been provided. Okay, uh, however, you are not required to go too much in detail in this particular article. Then, after that, a defamation case, Rahul files appeal in Gujarat High Court. No need to track it every day. Center to conduct national conclave on Man Ki Baat. Okay, so guys, recently we have seen that uh, just yesterday there was a report that the Man Ki Baat has reached to 100 crore citizens. Okay, the test is how far can courts go on same-sex union? Supreme Court. Okay, so this particular issue is going on in the newspaper where the same-sex marriages can be allowed or not. This petition is being heard by the Supreme Court. Okay, so every day there are some comment is coming on in this particular article. You are not at all required to read every day comments, arguments, counter arguments that are being given. When this particular article will conclude, we will see that. Okay, whether Supreme Court has allowed it or whether it has not allowed it. So many editorials are going to come anyhow when the final judgment will come. So till then, please don't try it every day okay then further karnataka polls 2023 page so uh, this particular page has been fixed to the karnataka polls not much relevant article is given in this particular page then let's finish this job says biden 80 announcing 2024 presidential run so joe biden has announced that for 2024 he will also be running for the presidential election so the video has been released nothing important for exam Huge biological risk after Sudan fighters occupy lab. So in Sudan, there are the, we see this particular thing that the military factions, okay, opposing generals in the Sudan, they are fighting each other. Uh, now some of the fighters has entered in this, uh, in, in, in this national public lab, okay, which contains strains of many of the deadly disease, viruses, etc. Okay, and because of, and they have kicked out of the technicians. So this is a concern. Then further moving on, uh, Sri Lanka seeks India's help to evacuate citizens from Sudan. Okay, nothing much, very much important. We'll take this. Then oil price, El Nino key risk to inflation, growth outlook. Okay. Then guys, further we have the political trends also, uh, sorry, economical trends also that we have. Okay. So guys, this is all about the relevant, uh, about the overview of the newspaper. And now let's take all the relevant articles in the newspaper one by one in detail. Let's start with that. Okay. So uh, you can download these explainer notes as I was telling you from our telegram channel. 
If in every class we start with a GS quotation, which can be used to complement your answers in GS 1, 2, 3 and 4. So today we are going to take the quotation from Mahatma Gandhi, the father of the nation. So Gandhi ji says, the measure of a society is how it treats its weakest member. The measure of a society is how it treats its weakest member. Now guys, when we talk about the weakest member, weakest members are the ones who are not capable to raise the voices on their own behalf. So we have the vulnerable sections in which the children, the disabled, often the minorities, okay, and for that particular matter, even the animals who are voiceless, okay, they all constitute the weakest section of the society. So how society will treat them? It will show the level of empathy in that society. It will show the level of compassion in that particular society. How it treats the vulnerable section? It shows the amount of tolerance and accommodation in that particular society. So how a society treats its most weakest section? We can test the moral progress of that particular society. Okay, this is the true measure of a society because see this thing, the person who is powerful, the person who can who can raise his voice on his or or her own behalf, that particular person will always be given a better and nice treatment. But what about the weak people who cannot raise the voice on their own behalf? So whether state is coming forward to help them or not, that is a true test of the progress of that particular state. We can use this particular idea for GS paper number 4 ethics as well as in GS paper number 2 good governance, we can use this particular quotation. Now, starting up, starting up and let's take the first article. Okay, genome sequencing and the genome India project genome sequencing and genome india project now guys actually first of all what do we mean by the genome sequencing okay uh, by the way this particular article we'll see with respect to this article we'll see with respect to the gs paper number 3 science and technology even the prelims examination this particular article is important and in gs paper number 2 health also this particular article is important because genome sequencing is going to improve the uh, health of the people in terms of certain hereditary disease with when they are concerned now let's understand this particular article with very basics okay now okay guys understand this particular thing that uh, you all have heard about the DNA. You all have heard about the DNA. Now guys understand this particular thing that every person has, every person has a unique DNA, okay, which resides in the nucleus of our cell, nucleus of our cell. When we explain the DNA in very simple words, what it is, it is the genetic code of a human body. Now understand this particular thing. Every, every one of us, we have unique hair texture, we have unique hair color, we have unique physique and everything. So, this particular genetic information that how our hair will be, how our skin color will be, what our physique will be, all this particular information is contained in the code and that code is our DNA. Now, basically guys understand this particular thing, many number of times within this particular DNA, there are certain mutations also that happen. Okay, and because of these particular mutations or because of their some error in our DNA code, we also get many of the hereditary disease. For example, when we talk about, for example guys, just a minute, when we talk about nearly 10,000 disease, nearly 10,000 disease such as cystic fibrosis, thalassemia. These diseases are hereditary disease and these diseases are because of the gene malfunctioning in our DNA. Now when we talk about the DNA, DNA is a complete genetic information and within the entire set of DNA, there is a single gene that is malfunctioning, that is problematic. Guys, just to take an example, suppose you, if you are a software engineer, you know that all the softwares are made by a code, okay, there is a code and if there is an error in a code, entire software will not function properly, there will be a glitch that will come in a software. So many number of times we have the disease which are because there is some kind of a malfunctioning in our genes in our DNA, okay. Now, basically scientists around the world, what they are doing, they are running the human genome program. They are running the human genome program. Now this human genome program was started in 1990 and under this human genome program, 
द साइंटिस्ट दे वॉन्ट टू दे वॉन्ट टू हैव अ रिपोजिटरी ऑफ द ह्यूमन डी एन ए ओके ना अंडरस्टैंड दिस पर्टिकुलर थिंग आइज दैट वेन वी टॉक अबाउट द एंटायर पॉपुलेशन ऑफ द वर्ल्ड ओके सो एंटायर पॉपुलेशन ऑफ द वर्ल्ड कैन बी डिवाइडेड इन सर्टेन ग्रुप्स ओके एंड इवन वेन आई i am using the word dna understand this particular thing that majority of the dna is the same but there is a basically 99% of the dna of everyone is the same but there is little bit variation and when what we want to do we want to make a repository of the different different variations in the dna in the different different population groups we want to have that data we want to have that particular repository and for that particular thing human genome project was started in 1990 so what is this human genome project in this human genome project the scientists want to have the repository of the genetic information they want to have a repository of the dna and their variation okay this was going on very good now guys what has happened indian government has also started its own human genome project okay let me tell you about that human genome project we also have started so basically what has happened what has happened so india also had started the genome india project and this particular project was launched in 2019 and what was the aim of this particular project the aim of this particular project was to sequence the genomes genomes means the complete dna the aim was to sequence the genome or the complete dna of at least 10000 individuals from the different different population groups from the different different population group now guys if i tell you india india has around 1.3 billion population and this 1.3 billion population can be divided in 4600 population groups in 4600 population groups so from these 4600 population groups we want to have the data complete dna genome of 10000 individuals now why this particular thing will be important because guys by this particular thing we will be able to create a comprehensive genetic database of the indian population now guys if you know this particular thing tribal people in india they are very much afflicted with the sickle cell disease then there are people living in a particular part of the country they have a particular genetic disease now that genetic disease is coming from their their a kind of a malfunctioning in their gene in their dna so understand this particular thing that if we will have this comprehensive genetic database of the indian population we will be able to understand properly the genetic variation in the indians and how these genetic variations are leading to some kind of disease in the population now guys understand this particular thing today now okay understand this thing today basically gene editing is possible okay so you might have heard about the technology crispr you might have heard about the crispr which is called as molecular scissor so by using the crispr technology what can be done gene editing can be done gene editing can be done dna editing can be done now understand this thing if we have that data about the dna profiles of the population group and if we can identify that okay this population group is having this particular disease because there is problem in the dna then what we can do we can rectify those particular disease also by using the gene editing in the future not today in the future but first we need to have a data we need to have a data so this particular data we are creating under the in genome india project now first of all a question will come in your mind that okay why this thing has come in the news because guys as i told you that 10000 individual genome data was to be created recently government of india has provided that two third of this exercise is completed two third of this exercise is completed they have provided this so therefore it came in the news now understand this particular thing guys that when we talk about the uh, when we talk about the dna sequencing this has actually played a very important role even during the pandemic even during the pandemic it has played a very important role for example guys when we talk about the viruses so the scientists study the rna of the viruses okay moreover when we talk about the covid 19 pandemic the scientists they studied the rna structure of the virus they tried to understand that how the viruses can mutate how they can spread how the vaccine can be created which will be efficient against these particular viruses so guys by understanding the rna structure of the virus and all such kind of a things they also were able to detect the occurrence of covid better vaccines were developed and when we talk about the india india has also come out with this indian sars cov2 genomic consortium 
okay and what this consortium is doing it has uh, basically it is a, it is a group of the labs across the country what which they do what what they do they scan the coronavirus samples from the patients and by scanning the different different samples of the coronavirus they are able to track that which virus is more able to mutate which virus can spread more easily which virus is more deadly in terms of its impact on a human body all these particular things are being done by the uh, indian sars cov2 genomic consortium that is i n s a c o g so what i am trying to explain guys is that when we talk about the genome sequencing now now uh, genome sequencing and the genome india project so genome sequencing is an exercise by the world scientist which began in 1990 where the scientist want to have the information about the human human genome human dna okay and on that particular line india is also running the genome india project that got started in 2019 now it has been completed to by third that is 66% project has been completed okay this is all about this okay and how it can help all these things also we have taken up guys i hope that you have understood it okay now moving to the next article okay so this article we have taken from editorial section rescue service okay rescue service now what this article is all about guys this article will see with respect to the gs paper number 2 international affairs and india's role india's role in international crisis situation india's role in international crisis situation now before going in this particular article let me give you some of the basic background information right now guys in sudan you might be knowing this particular thing and we have also seen every day article are coming that in the crisis are going on in sudan first of all understand this particular thing that why sudan crisis is going on so basically military factions or the military generals within the sudan they are fighting with each other so right now guys we see this particular thing that general abdel fateh al burhan who is heading the sudanese armed forces fine general abdel fateh al burhan he is heading the sudanese armed forces he is fighting with his former deputy his former deputy that is general mohammed hameti now for uh, general mohammed hameti was the head of the paramilitary group rsf and general abdel fateh al burhan he heads the sudanese armed forces okay he is also the head of the ruling council of the sudan now both of them are fighting for their domination they want the both of them want to get the power under their control they want to rule the sudan and for that they are fighting because of the fightings in these two rival groups the people are struck there the violence is increasing and as people are struck indians are also there in sudan who have got struck now the different different countries they have started evacuation operations and in these evacuation operations they are evacuating their own people from the sudan and india also had started the evacuation operation and this operation is op named as kaveri this operation is named as kaveri now under this particular operation indian air force indian air force indian navy they will be coordinating for evacuating the people and ministry of external affairs will provide them assistance right now india is coordinating its effort along with the other countries also for example india is helping and is seeking help from countries such as us uk uae saudi arabia okay they are cooperating in terms of the logistics they are cooperating in terms of the routes from which the people can be evacuated the timing okay all these particular thing now guys when we talk about uh, understand this particular thing india will also be using the saudi arabias and french planes also for evacuating the indians now one particular very good dimension have been provided in this particular article the article says this thing that see when we talk about india india is actually having the largest diaspora means indian people living in other countries we have the largest diaspora and there are 14 million non resident indians that are living in the different different countries there are 7 million tourists there are 7 million tourists and travelers that go from india to the other country so point is that right now guys in every country every place indians are living there 
सो देर फॉर इफ एनी क्राइसिस विल हैपन इन एनी वेयर इन द वर्ल्ड इंडियंस विल ऑलवेज बी ट्रैप्ड इंडियंस विल ऑलवेज बी स्ट्रक्ड देयर वेन अफगानिस्तान अफगानिस्तान द तालिबान टू कोवर देर वर ऑल्सो मेनी ऑफ द पीपल हु वर स्ट्रक्ड इन यूक्रेन ऑल्सो मेनी ऑफ द पीपल इंडियन students were struck so point is that indian people they are present in almost every country so whenever a crisis will broke indian are going to struck there so therefore it has been provided that then it is a responsibility of indian government to evacuate them okay so therefore the article is saying that we need to have a standard operating a procedure and we also need to have a special force even we need to have a special force that will deal with these crisis situation and will rescue the indian people effectively from this particular thing now if you take example many number of times indian people are living in many of the danger dangerous geographies also for example there are many students who are in ukraine still many students are there in ukraine then there are the nurses indian nurses that are working in iraq yemen okay there are the laborers working in libya syria lebanon all these countries are very high risk zones and any time a crisis can broke there and these people are to be evacuated so india need to have two things in place number one a standard operating procedure what do we mean by a standard operating procedure standard operating procedure means a list of steps that are to be followed in a time of a crisis that for example who will rescue how the coordination will happen how the resource will be given to them okay all these things should be designed beforehand a standard operating procedure should be there and a special force needs to be there now this particular thing guys has actually been recommended by the parliamentary by the parliamentary standing committee of external affairs in 2022 so we now need to uh, take this particular recommendation by the parliamentary standing committee very seriously and should implement it okay so this is guys a very very good dimension that actually has been provided now understand these are the type of things that you need to be careful for your exam in exam if you have seen the previous year questions you will find that the questions are very broad based okay now that is all about it and uh, moving to the next question uh, next article now the right to litigate the right to litigate okay now what is this article the right to litigate okay now this particular article guys we'll see with respect to the gs paper number 3 environmental issue gs paper number 3 environmental issues now before going in this particular article let me give you some of the background information uh basically guys what actually has happened recently cbi central bureau of investigation has registered a case against a environmental ngo has re registered the case against the environmental ngo that is legal initiative for forest and environment legal initiative for forest and environment this is an ngo which propagates about the environmental conservation now why the case has been filed against them it has been said that this particular ngo is receiving the funding from the foreign sources and they are using this particular money to litigate against the coal power projects in india so if i give you some example if i give you some data guys understand this particular thing that right now india is having 28.5 gigawatt of coal power capacity and there are 32 gigawatt of power plants which are under construction and it is being said that this particular ngo is receiving the funding from the foreign countries and they will use this particular money to challenge the new coal power plants or to challenge the coal power plants that are under construction okay and by this particular thing they are saying that it will impact the energy security of india okay they they will impact the energy security of india now we are not required to go too much in detail in the case that has been filed or the nitty gritties of that particular thing we are not required to go but guys the article is saying this particular thing that if they are opposing the coal powered plants that is not entirely a wrong thing why because india had already taken the climate targets india already had taken the climate targets for example we are the signatory of the unfccc the united nation framework convention on climate change and under this unfccc already we have taken for example the indcs intended nationally determined contribution targets which were the part of the paris summit 2015 okay so under unfccc there are the conference of parties that are held and there was one very important cop that was held in paris in 
and under Paris 2015, the countries have taken the INDCs, Intended National Determined Contribution. INDC means these are the targets that countries will fulfill in order to meet their environmental pledges. Now, India also what has happened, uh, COP26 that was held in 2021 in Glasgow, there India has also taken one more target that is to be carbon neutral that to achieve net zero by 2070. Okay, so in order to reach your INDCs, in order to reach net zero, we need to reduce the carbon emission and coal-fired power plants are also needed to be, uh, their numbers should also go down. So this is something. Then India has also uh, endorsed the IPCC reports on climate change, that is Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. Now IPCC provides this particular thing that we need to be quick in order to reduce the carbon emissions and IPCC says that please ensure that the temperature rise doesn't exceed 1.5 degrees Celsius at pre-industrial times. But if I tell you, already IPCC has provided that in 2018, 1.1 degree Celsius temperature rise had already happened. Maximum temperature rise should not exceed 1.5 degree Celsius, it has been provided. So there also guys, there also guys in this particular capacity, there is an issue coming that we need to reduce the carbon emissions and therefore we need to reduce the uh, carbon emissions by about 45 percent from 2010 level by 2030. What it means in simple terms? In simple terms it means that suppose in 2010, 100 unit of carbon was being emitted. Okay, so we need to reduce it by 45 percent. Okay, by which year we need to do it? We need to do it by 2030. Okay, this is something that is uh, that has to be done by the world countries in order to reduce the carbon emission. But one more thing you need to keep in mind, one more thing you need to keep in mind that actually India, there is also the principle of CBDR. There is also the principle of CBDR that is common but differentiated responsibility. Now the CBDR means that fine, uh, climate change is a common concern and stopping, arresting the climate change is common responsibility. Every country needs to stop the climate change. They need to ensure that the temperature rise doesn't happen. But it is also a differentiated responsibility. Developed countries will do more. Developing countries will do less. Fine. So therefore, India under this CBDR principle, India under the CBDR principle has actually a right, has a right to use the coal power, coal energy. Now, understand this thing that when we talk about the coal powered plants in India, many of them actually have been delayed, many of them actually have been scrapped, many of them have actually run in opposition also. But the oppositions have come from National Green Tribunal, from National Green Tribunal, many number of times uh, they are violating the environmental protection legislations and many such kind of a things have been there. So the article is talking about this particular thing that uh, when we talk about the uh, the case that has been filed against this particular NGO, fine, uh, okay, it is fine that we need the coal energy as a part of our energy security, but at the same time, India also have the climate goals that also need to be kept in the mind. So, this is guys all about this particular article. I hope that you have understood it and now moving to the next article. On the code on social security for platform based gig workers. So as I have told you, this particular article is, uh, uh, or it, it, this article was already published in 2020. Now see, this particular article guys, we'll see with respect to GS paper number 3, labor issues. GS paper number 3, labor issues. In the context of this, we are going to see this particular article. Now, okay, so basically, a minute, yes. So basically, uh, first of all, understand the context as why this particular article has come down. So let's understand that why this particular article has come in the news. So recently, the Rajasthan government, they have come out with a bill that is Rajasthan Platform Based Gig Workers Registration and Welfare Bill 2023. Now before going in this article, first what do we mean by this? Platform based gig workers, platform based gig workers, see guys, that gig workers are those workers who are the part of gig economy. Gig workers are those workers who are the part of 
gig economy now what is gig economy gig economy is that part of economy where the relation between the employer the relation between the employer and employee they are not permanent the relation is on the basis of work assignment okay understand this particular thing guys suppose this is employer this is employer this is employee there will there will not be there will not be a uh, the employee will not be on a payroll of employer employer will give an assignment to employee employee will complete that particular assignment and in lieu of that the employer will pay the money to employee for example guys when we uh, i have given you this particular example earlier also i will use the same example suppose suppose i am making videos on youtube suppose i shot a video and i want to get this particular video edited what i can do i can ask a person who is a professional video editor that you please edit my video and if you will edit my video i will give you the x amount of money so this particular person is a gig worker i am hiring this particular person only for a work assignment okay i am not hiring this particular person as my permanent employee i am not keeping this particular person in a pay role in my company or for my work so the gig workers are those workers which work for a particular assignment and they are paid on assignment basis they are not a permanent employee of any organization now understand this particular thing the gig workers have been there always okay now guys if you see the many even construction workers are also there which are being paid on the basis of the assignment they do they are the gig workers but guys understand this thing that now the gig workers number have increased because of the emergence of platforms because of the emergence of platforms and now there is a category of the platform gig workers that have come in the picture what are the platform gig workers you might all be knowing about ola uber swiggy zomato urban company these are the platforms these platforms provide the works assignments to the people who are working on these platforms they complete that particular assignment and then they are paid for example a rider in swiggy or zomato whenever they complete a delivery they will get the money on the basis of the number of orders that they have delivered for example some 10 15 20 30 rupees whatever they are getting so platform gig workers are those workers who are getting paid per assignment but that work they are getting through these platforms now understand this particular thing guys what has happened in past a few uh, one or two years we have seen this particular thing that there are multiple reports where the swiggy workers zomato workers they have went on strike they have protested that they are being paid very less money in amount of work that they are doing now you see this thing that now even this 10 minute delivery app such as the blinkit etc have come which promises that your groceries will be delivered within 10 minutes now workers they say that they have to put a lot of effort okay they have to drive very fast in order to deliver the order within 10 minutes but they are being paid just just 10 15 rupees per delivery fine this is very hard for them to meet meet their ends they say that these platforms they are becoming more and more exploitative for example ola uber whenever the taxi drivers are uh, using their services they have to pay a fixed commission which is often very high so they these platforms have become exploitative so in order to protect the right of these gig workers there is a law that has been introduced by the rajasthan government that is rajasthan platform based gig worker a minute fine that is the rajasthan platform based gig workers registration and welfare bill 2023 now this particular bill has very stringent provisions against the aggregators as well as uh, aggregators for example ola uber are aggregator okay so very stringent laws are against them that they need to provide them all the welfare okay now this particular bill when it will pass we will see that finally what will come now guys understand this particular thing that apart from this some value addition i want to give you that when we talk about the labor rights in india the labor rights in india are protected by the labor laws now right now guys understand this particular thing that in the past labor as a subject was there in the concurrent list and because of that particular thing there are more than 40 laws that are there on the labor subject so therefore what has happened in the past few years in the past few years the government has uh, 
consolidated the labor laws more than 44 laws they have been consolidated in the four labor codes okay and these four labor codes are the code on wages 2019 the code on social security 2020 the occupational safety health and working condition code industrial relation code so what we have done we have now simplified the labor laws and we have compressed more than 44 labor laws in these four labor codes fine wages social security occupational safety industrial relation code now here guys we are going to see that okay rajasthan government is coming out with a separate bill very good but what are the protections that are there with these gig workers in the present law that is in these four labor codes now so uh, recently some good things have happened in this particular context some good thing has happened in this particular context for example guys when we talk about the code on social security for gig workers okay now understand this particular thing that uh, uh, when we talk about the definition of employee okay so in this particular capacity the code on wages the code on wages 2019 has actually expanded the definition of an employee now earlier the definition of employee was uh, was to be based on the basis of the relation that an employee has a, has with an organization now understand this particular thing that if there is a return agreement contract between an employee and employer then the employee means to be the worker of that particular em employer that worker of that particular organization not at all a problem but nowadays we see that there are the in for now see right now more than 90 percent of india's workforce is working in an informal sector and as they are working in an informal sector there are no labor contracts okay so therefore now the status of an employee will be seen on the basis of the wages that a person is getting okay on the basis of the wages that a person is getting so this is actually a very good thing in the context of large informal economy that they are have, having moreover the code on social security for gig workers also provide this particular thing that that the platform such as the swiggy zomato etc they uh, the workers can claim benefits from these particular platforms what benefits that they can but what benefits they can claim now first of all let me tell you the benefits that they can claim they can claim the benefits like maternity benefits life and disability cover old age protection provident fund employment injury benefit uh, injury benefit all these benefits that they can claim from the platform pl platforms but guys understand this particular thing this is good that these uh, claims they can get but at the same time they are not recognized as the labor rights it means you can request a platform that please give us maternity benefit but you cannot go to the court if the platform is not giving you you cannot go you cannot approach the court so it does not allow them to go court to demand the better and stable pay moreover even the government cannot drag these platforms in the courts that you are not giving them welfare you are not giving them maternity benefit the point is that when we talk about the labor code in india they have done some good work but they have missed on some important point good work that an employee will be defined on the basis of wages good work that they can claim benefit but why this benefit have not been made as a part of their labor right because if it is not their labor right then they cannot go to the court they can just request so this is something limitations that have been there okay now for example uh, moreover uh, further in these labor courts it has also been provided it has also been provided that all these benefits uh, which benefit is to be given which benefit is not to be given that central government will formulate from time to time now understand this particular thing central government also can give them the welfare policies but again they are not uh, they are they are not actually um, guaranteed as because they are not a labor right so there are certain misses and there are certain good things that have been provided in this particular direction that is all guys about it i hope that you have understood it and now we'll move to the next article rate of out of pocket expenditure declines rate of out of pocket expenditure declines now this is going to be a very very important data for gs paper number two health related issues so for gs paper number two health this is going to be very important data that you can use in your exam now first of all understand this particular thing guys what do we understand by out of pocket expenditure out of pocket expenditure so the word out of pocket expenditure is used in the context of health out of pocket expenditure word is used in the context of health 
Now understand this particular thing guys that whatever the entire expenditure that is being done on the health in an economy, all the expenditure is uh, not something which people were always capable to pay. Now understand this particular thing guys, many number of times people they met with some deadly disease or their family members met with their deadly disease and to get them treated what they have to do, they have to sell gold, they have to sell their property, they have to sell some assets, they have to borrow money from a money lender and then they use that particular money into the treatment. Now understand this is the out of pocket expenditure. Out of pocket expenditure is that expenditure on health for which people did not had money. They arrange the money either by borrowing or they arrange the money either or they arrange the money by selling some of the asset. That part of health expenditure is the out of pocket expenditure. Now, when we talk about the out of pocket expenditure, so what is the out of pocket expenditure? We get that particular data, okay, from the national health account, national health account estimates, okay. So, recently what has happened, Ministry of Health has released the national health account estimates for period 2019-2020 and they have said that in this particular period, out of pocket expenditure has declined. Now, see this particular thing. Basically, out-of-pocket expenditure was 62.6% in 2014-15. It means, out of the total expenditure that is being done on the health, suppose in a economy, 100 rupees are being spent on the health, then 62.5% expenditure was out-of-pocket. Means, this much expenditure had happened by borrowing the money, by selling some asset. Now, this out-of-pocket expenditure has declined to 47.1% in 2019-20. Okay, this is a good thing and uh, it has been said that the reason that out of pocket expenditure has been declined also because of the fact that now government is spending more in the health. So, government's expenditure in health has increased from 1.13% of GDP in 2014-15 to 1.35% of GDP in 2019-20. So, this is a very very important data. Guys, always whenever we are talking about any health dimension, we talk about what government expenditure is there, what expenditure is out of pocket expenditure. So, please note down this particular data. Very, very important for your exam. Okay. So, that is all guys about this particular article. I hope that you have understood it. And now, moving to the editorials. Now, guys, beforehand, I want to tell you one thing that today there is not too much substance in the editorials. So, editorials, either they are politicized, so editorials today, either they are politicized or they are talking on so much of abstract or generalized kind of information that too much substance is not there, but still we will cover that. Okay, so now this particular article, the limited role of textbooks in history. This article is talking about a recent instance where the references of certain Mughal rulers were dropped from the history textbooks. Now, the article is giving a very kind of a, a generic kind of an idea. The article says this particular thing that recently NCRT has omitted the details about the Mughal rulers from the class 12 history textbooks. It is being said that actually we think that our understanding of history comes from textbooks. Our understanding of history comes from the textbooks but it is not completely the idea it has been said that our understanding of history also comes from the lived experiences also come from also comes from what we see in the society okay the experiences the narratives that are told by us by our family members by other people living in the society now the article is saying this particular thing that the role of textbook is actually very important in understanding the history but it is not the only source which tells the people about the history. Now, it has been said that the school students of history, they will broadly know that first there was Delhi Sultanate, then there were the Mughals that came, then the British came in Delhi. Even you drop the references of some of the Mughal rulers, but still the student will know the world, what role Mughals have played in the history of India. Moreover, it has also been provided that, uh, basically it has also been provided that, the school students when they complete their education see they might not be knowing the names of the British governor generals but they know that governor general was the highest authority for the British Raj so students don't remember 
द नेम्स ऑफ द गवर्नर जनरल बट दे नो दैट दे वर द हाइएस्ट अथॉरिटी तो इवन वेन यू ड्रॉप द रेफरेंसेज ऑफ सम ऑफ द एक्ट्स ऑफ द मुगल्स दे माइट नॉट रिमेंबर दैट बट दे स्टिल रिमेंबर दैट द मुगल्स वर द वन हु प्लेड अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट रोल इन द हिस्ट्री तो दीज आर सर्टन थिंग्स विच विल स्टिल बी रेलिवेंट नाउ द आर्टिकल से इज दिस दैट इन नाइनटीन सेंचुरी थॉमस कार्लाइल ओके ही प्रपोज द great man theory great man theory and he said that the great men influential men influential people who changes the course of history either by force or by their intellect okay the narrative of these people needs to be told through their acts the narrative of these people should be told about their acts for example guys when we talk about the history you take the example of a uh, uh, infamous person in history hitler Hitler changed the course of history by his aggression, by his force. Okay, we read about him in history, not as his personal profile, but we read about him as an act that he had done. So always the acts of the rulers needed to be explained. So it should not have been omitted. It should not have been dropped down. Okay, this is something that has happened. Now, guys, the NCERT. Now see this thing. History is very long. History has so much of information, and NCERT has a responsibility that they need to compress the history in three hundred odd pages. And many number of times they have to omit the information. Okay, but when we talk about omitting the information on Mughals, which happened to be a very important uh, rulers of the India, they might have tried to erase the factual aspect of history. This is something that has been provided. Okay. so that is all guys about it beyond that there is nothing important in this particular article so as i told you that the article today they are little bit abstract fine now moving on to the next article sanskrit as official language ambedkar's amendment now guys what has happened recently one of a judge has provided that thing that uh, india should have sanskrit as an official language okay and in this particular context this article has come so the article is saying that in 1949 1949 dr b r ambedkar has actually submitted an amendment in the constituent assembly and has actually proposed sanskrit to be the official language of the union official language of the union and there were actually 16 signatories apart from the dr b r ambedkar in this particular thing okay in uh, so in 1949 dr b r ambedkar uh, submitted an amendment in the constituent assembly that proposed okay so they proposed an amendment fine uh, just to make uh, this particular thing clear if in case you are not understanding the context is this that one of a judge has recently proposed that sanskrit can be made as an official language now this proposal is not new this proposal was moved in the constituent assembly earlier also in 1949 and in this particular thing dr b r ambedkar proposed an amendment okay now when this amendment was supported okay there ag again opened up a debate and this particular debate was on this particular line that whether sanskrit can be allowed or not sanskrit can be allowed or not now there were the hindi speaker people on one hand and then the on other hand there are the people who were for not from the hindi speaking land now guys in this particular category there were some people who were supporting sanskrit some people who were not supporting the sanskrit hindi speakers were little bit more comfortable with the idea of supporting the sanskrit but anyhow the sanskritist ideas was dropped and finally munshi ayangar formula was brought munshi ayangar formula the munshi ayangar formula is named after k m munshi and n gopal swami ayangar and according to this munshi ayangar formula it was provided that english will continue as a official language of india along with hindi for a period of 15 years but after 15 years the hindi can replace english and hindi will be the official language after 15 years but what happened around 1965 the amendment was brought and it was provided that actually hindi and english both will continue as an official language so this episode has actually been told largely in this particular article okay now India to host SCO defense ministers meet this week. Okay, now uh, basically, guys, when we talk about the SCO, SCO stands for Shanghai Cooperation Organization. SCO stands for Shanghai Cooperation Organization, uh, which is a Central Eurasian and uh, organization. Now, first of all, when we talk about SCO, guys, 
SU is very important this particular year because for 2023 India has become the chairman of SCO and as India has become the chairman chairperson of SCO India is going to home it, uh, some, uh, India is going to host the SCO summit and many other meets under the SCO will also be hosted by India and therefore guys what India is doing India is hosting the SCO defense ministers meeting this week where the Chinese defense minister will also be visiting and this is an important thing why because since Galwan Valley episode since Galwan Valley episode that came in 2020 after that particular thing China and India relations have not been very good and this is the first time since LEC 2020 episode that Chinese Defense Minister will be coming to India and many of the pending issues they can resolve here. Now when we talk about the SCO guys, SCO guys initially SCO was formed as Shanghai 5 in 1996 okay and this Shanghai 5 was brought in order to resolve the boundary talks demilitarization between Kazakhstan, China, Kyrgyzstan, Russia and Tajikistan. So these five countries came together and they formed the Shanghai Five. After that Uzbekistan entered as a sixth country and in 2005 the Shanghai Five was renamed as SCO, Shanghai Cooperation Organization. Now what Shanghai Cooperation Organization is? It is a Eurasian political, economic and military organization which aims to ensure peace, security and stability in this particular region. Now when we talk about the SCO guys, SEO, it is the world's largest regional organization which covers 60% of the area of Eurasia, 40% of the world population and 30% of the global GDP. Now as of India and Pakistan, they became member of SEO in 2017, Iran joined in 2022, okay. Now for 23, India is a chairman. Now already I have told you about the priorities of SEO. That priority is to strengthen the mutual trust among the member states, cooperation and within the SEO, the most important vertical of SEO is SEO RATS which stands for Regional Anti-Terrorist Structure. Now it is a permanent body which aims to facilitate the action against the terrorism and all such kind of things. Okay, so this is all guys all about it, fine. Now this is all about it, fine. Now coming to the main question for today. So what is the main practice question for today? What do you understand by genome sequencing? What is the significance of genome sequencing? Discuss in the context of Genome India project. So this will be going to be a GS paper number 3, 10 marker question. Okay. So that is all guys about it. I hope that you have understood uh, this particular article. Okay. So guys with this we come to an end to this particular session. Now guys we are going to meet tomorrow. Till then. Please take care of yourselves guys and uh, I hope that you have understood the video and I hope that you are getting the utility of this particular session. You are able to make sense of the articles. So that is all guys about it. Uh, thank you so much. Now we will meet tomorrow. Thank you.